Good morning friends. Welcome to Parnika Tutorials YouTube channel. In the last video, I have discussed what is a parser, what is a top down parser, what is a bottom up parser and again how the parsers are classified into top down and bottom up parser. All these things I have discussed in detail. I hope you have watched that video. If you have not watched that video, I request you to go back and watch that video and come back to this video for better understanding. In this video, I want to discuss one of the top down parser which is a recursive descent parser. I will discuss the recursive descent parser algorithm with two examples. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First let me discuss how the recursive descent parser will work. If you look at it any parser, any parser will take the two inputs, one is the input string and it will take the grammar okay it will first need to check means checking means whether the given input string can be generated from the grammar or not if it is can be generated what is the parse string so every parser will take the two inputs one is the input string and grammar and it will generate the parse string so coming to the recursive descent parser it uses the input string and the grammar and it generates the parse string. Now any parser, the main thing will vary is how it is constructed in the parse string. Coming to the recursive descent parser, it uses the brute force mechanism and backtracking mechanism to generate the parse string. Whereas other parsers, I will discuss in the coming videos, they will use the tables such as LL1 uses the table, LR0 also uses the table, uses table means for the given input string and for the grammar first they will construct the table using the table they will construct the parse string but whereas recursive descent parser will not construct any table it uses the backtracking mechanism and brute force mechanism to construct the parse string so i will discuss how the recursive descent parser will construct the parse tree with these two examples now coming to the example one Okay, I hope you are following with me. Coming to the example one, first we need to identify what are the non-terminals. The non-terminals are the symbols which are there in the left hand side. S and A are the non-terminals. What are the terminals? The symbols which are there in the right hand side other than the non-terminals. If you look at you have the small c, small d, a, comma b. So these are the terminals. And what is the start symbol? The start symbol is yes. What is the purpose of the start symbol? When we are constructing the parse tree, from where you need to start? You need to start from the start symbol. So the start symbol will act as a root node for the parse tree. Okay. Now I want to generate a string called CAD. First look at it. C is there as a terminal. A is there as a terminal. D is also as a terminal. So maybe the string can be generated from this grammar. If it is can be generated from the grammar, what is the parse tree? We will do it. Now recursive descent parser will start from the start symbol. It will look at it whether this is a, it consists of two pointers. One is descent pointer and the input pointer. So always it will look at it whether the descent pointer is consisting of any terminal or not. If it is a terminal, then it will check whether it is equal to the input pointer or not. If it is not a terminal, meaning is that if it is a non-terminal, then it will look the productions, what are there corresponding to the non-terminal. If you look at it, yes, we have only one production CAD. Let's check it. If it is having more than one production, A determines in this example, if you look at it, A determines ABC, ABD, AAD. Then first it will use this production. If it is matching, everything is matching, okay. If it is not matching, it will go for the backtracking and it will select this one. If it is matching, okay. If it is not matching, again it will do the backtracking and it will select this one. Like that it will work. Whereas in this one, only one choice is there. So it will derive C, A and D. Is it clear? Now if you look at it, this is the decent pointer is pointing and input pointer is pointing to C. Is it clear? Now input pointer and descent pointer is having the C which is same. 
so descent pointer will point to this one input pointer will point to this one is it clear for you now again the descent pointer is pointing to a non terminal how it got it is a non terminal because it is a capital a which is there in the non terminals list now once it is a non terminal it will look at the productions what are possible there are two productions are possible first it will choose choose this one okay which is a b now where is the descent pointer is pointing now it is pointing to this one okay and input pointer is pointing to this one both are matching so then descent pointer will point to this one input pointer will shift now if you look at a descent pointer and input pointer are not matching then what is the meaning whatever the decision you have taken is wrong so you will go for the back tracking or you will go for the roll back anything i can call okay now input pointer is pointing to this one now the pass tree will looks like this c a d descent pointer is pointing to this one then it is a non terminal so it will take the production a i hope everyone have understood this way how i have done because there is a back tracking it will go here because from here only it came so when it go for the back tracking it has to go here and it will check what are the other productions are possible other production is a determines a is possible now descent pointer is pointing to this one input pointer is pointing to this one again there is a match so descent pointer will come here input pointer will shift now again the descent pointer and input pointer is matching and the string is ending so i can say that this is the parse tree for the given string from the given grammar so this is the way the recursive descent parser will construct it if you look at we have used the brute force first this choice then if it is not matching we are gone for the back tracking so it uses the brute force and back tracking mechanism to construct the parse tree for a given string and for the given grammar is it clear so let me discuss again with another example i have taken a little bit complex example to make you understand the concept in a better way now first thing we need to identify what are the non terminals the non terminals are capital a capital b capital c capital d what are the terminals is it clear this is capital c okay so which is a non terminal so the terminals are a comma b comma you have a d here okay again you have a b you have a d you have a a already came and you have a epsilon these are the four terminals what is the start symbol the start symbol is a okay now i want to generate a string called a a b a look at it whether a a b a is consists of all the terminals or not a is there b is there okay i have not considered d and epsilon anyway i will not consider okay is it clear so now if this is the string if this string can be generated from this grammar or not if it can be generated what is the parse tree the recursive descent parser will generate we will look at it now it will start from the start symbol as usual now this is a non terminal if it is a non terminal what it will do it will generate the first production a b c this is capital c let me write a big one so that you will understand that it is a non terminal okay are you able to understand it or not now if you look at it a is having the input pointer and this is the descent pointer it is a match if it is a match descent pointer will shift to this one input pointer will shift to this one there is a mismatch it is b and it is a, a. it is a mismatch if it is a mismatch what it will do it will do the back tracking are you able to follow with me or not if it is doing the back tracking input pointer will point to this one and you have started from the again the start symbol now you will use this production a b d is it clear again the input pointer and descent pointer there is a match so descent pointer will point to this one input pointer will point to this one will you agree with me now b is a 
non terminal if it is a non terminal it will look at what are the productions are there it has two productions it will take this production first so b and b now the descent point is pointing to this one input point is pointing to a there is a mismatch so again it will do the backtracking if again it does the backtracking you will be here okay again it is a descent pointer which is a non terminal it will take the next one which is an epsilon what is epsilon string length whose string length is zero am i right or wrong in the theory of computation i have discussed about epsilon in detail i hope you have watched those videos anyway epsilon whose length is zero so i no need to consider so now descent pointer will point to this one now descent pointer is pointing to d and input pointer is pointing to a still so there is a mismatch so again it will do the backtracking are you able to understand it or not okay if it again do the backtracking the input pointer will point to this one and the descent pointer is consists of a non terminal a now it will use this third production look at it what will happen a a d now a and a there is a match now the descent pointer will point to this one again it will use this production think that because again it is a new one are you able to under, don't think that again it will start from here again it will start from the fresh which is a b c because again it is a brute force here because here it has taken the decision as a a d next time whenever the a comes it will take the first production only so a b c okay now if you look at a decent pointer is pointing to this one input pointer is pointing to this one there is a match so decent pointer and input pointer will shift now the decent pointer is b input pointer is b there is a match so input pointer is pointing to this one okay are you able to understand and this one c is what c is a non terminal so your input pointer is pointing to this one because you have got the a a b so you want to generate the a here now you have the c which is a decent pointer consist of now which is a non terminal if it is a non terminal you will use the production which production you will use you will use the production called d okay now the descent pointer is pointing to this one and your input pointer is pointing to this one again there is a mismatch if it is again there is a mismatch you will do the backtracking you will do the backtracking up to c only am i right because this is the decision you have taken that decision is wrong you will do the backtracking is it clear then you will take the epsilon here i hope you are following with me now if it is an epsilon whose string length is zero so you will go for this d now the descent pointer is pointing to this one which is what which is a non terminal if it is a non terminal then you will use the first production d determine ca okay now descent pointer is pointing to a input pointer pointing to a there is a match and the string is completed so for this string this grammar have generated using the recursive descent parser this parse tree if you want to yield the parse tree you can yield it from the start symbol a whenever you get a terminal you will write it here okay again a terminal a again a terminal b you got a epsilon you will consider it like that and you got a a and you finally got the start symbol so which is nothing but a a b a am i right or wrong so this is the way the recursive descent parser will generate the parse tree i hope you have understood about the recursive descent parser with these two examples if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts as early as possible thank you for watching my video have a nice day